Hello both, hope you're well. Sara Orchard, BBC. Before we get underway, Steve, could you give us an injury update for the whole squad, please? Yeah. Um, so, the the squad today, everybody was available in contention for selection. Um, the, it's great to see Marcus has returned to fitness, as, as has Mitch, and available for selection this week. Um, Finn Smith took a knock in the Scotland game, but uh, trained today. Fully, that was his first day back uh, training today. Um, first of all, you've named uh, Manny Fewe Waboso to get his first start. Uh, for a player who was in National One a year ago, can you just talk about a reaction when you told him? Yeah, um, he was full of gratitude. I don't know how many times he said thank you to me. Um, we've seen that, we've seen it with players recently, Theo Dan, another one that within a year of playing Amtils in the World Cup squad. And we see these, these young players with incredible ability and determination. And um, you see each time when you, when you throw a challenge at these players, um, Manny, Theo, they, they just they seem to just relish that challenge and, and jump right to it. And um, I think we've seen Manny uh, so far in this Six Nations, he's, he's, he's progressed brilliantly and, he, and he, he's earned this opportunity. You always say that you pick the team for the match ahead. So what is it about Manny that makes this his game? Yeah, and I think the the blend of players is important, and I think Manny um, he certainly came on uh, onto the field two weeks ago and had incredible impact. Um, he's a player who wants the ball. He's a player who wants to carry and he wants to get the team over the game line. Uh, if I could ask you, Jamie, a good friend of yours, Danny Kerr, uh, will be hoping to come off the bench to win his 100th cap. Uh, what can you say about him that perhaps you haven't already said before or he hasn't said himself? There's nothing that he hasn't already said himself. Um, look, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of him as a mate. We're very close. Um, he's had to work very, very hard to get to this um, milestone. He's been in and around this team for a long, long time. He made his professional debut in 2003, um, which is shocked me today when I heard about it. We did a bit of a presentation for him. Like he's uh, what an incredible guy, what an amazing player, someone who has done incredible things for this English team for a long, long time now. And um, he deserves this moment and hopefully we can make it a special day for him. And for you, Steve, same question and last one from me. What did it mean to you to be able to name Danny on the bench for that 100th cap? Yeah, I think um, that during the presentation Jamie talked about today, we were, we were at York last week for an open session and um, um, some, somebody handed uh, to Richard Wigglesworth the academy report of Danny Kerr from when he was under 18 to the National Academy report, genuine handwritten report. Um, and uh, it talked about needing work on his defence, um, needing, needing more time in the gym to get a bit bigger. But he was, uh, he's a genuine, this was presented this morning. Um, and it said, um, but a player is going to play for England many times. And um, he's done so, so well for so many years. And he's such an incredible um, influence around this squad now. And we're very, very fortunate that, that we have him. Steve, um, resist the temptation to make lots of changes. Does that just go into, you know, the, the focus on continuity and, and, and to a certain extent giving some of these guys from the Scotland game another opportunity to right some wrongs? Yeah, I think, I think continuity in selection is one of the one, one very important factor. And as we build this team, as we go forward, I think it's, it is, it's an important factor for consideration. We know in the Scotland game that... There were there were errors. It was probably the first time in a while I'd seen the weight of the shirt uh, feel heavy on the players. We've worked around that. We've worked to to develop that. And and we made we made some errors. And then as we made the errors, we started playing in a different way. And you, and you saw the way we started was how we intended to play. And but as you start deviating away from the way you'd planned to play, it, it, it led to more errors. Um, now. I've made a couple of changes to the team, but I think the I, I believe in these players. I think these players are the determined uh, to put in a performance this weekend. I sense that determination from them ever since the end of that Scotland game because there was disappointment. I think a lot of players were disappointed with how they'd gone. Um, we all we all were. So, but I sense a, a determination amongst the players ever since that that final whistle.
when you say felt the weight of the shirt, what, how do you kind of take that off them then? Is it just partly saying back to basics a bit and just remember the, you know, why they're here and the, 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 the fun side of it, if they can draw that out? I, I think one, we tried to make an, an environment here where the players enjoy it. I think the, an, env an environment here where we know at times mistakes are going to be made. But we need to just keep doing what we believe the right thing to do is. And um, I, say I, I, I back the players. Uh, the, yes, we made errors. We're disappointed in performance. We're disappointed in, in, in the result. But I also think this, this, is a player, this is a group of players who've made enormous progress. And over the last year, now we've started the next step of the journey in this Six Nations. Um, and, and the continuity of the, the selections, and in, I say it's, it's an important factor. When I look at, when I track this back and look at the continuity of selection over the last few years, it's potentially not, um, not always been as evident and not always helped the team to, to have lots of changes regularly. Um, I think this is the, the right team for the game this weekend. And obviously when you look at Ireland, they only lost twice in 22 and, and I appreciate they're in a different position from where you are. They, if they were to complete a Grand Slam, that would be four for them since 2003. Everyone knows England have only had one. I mean, do these sorts of things matter at this point or given where you are and where you're trying to get to, is, is, is actually where you're headed more important than where you are now? I think, um, always look at it in, in two ways. One is looking at what we can learn from the past. Um, so since since 2003, I, I believe Ireland have won more championships, Wales have won more championships and France have won more championships than England. So there's something not been done right for a consistent period of time. And so I'm always cognizant of that, what, learn, what, what we can learn going forward. What I can influence here is, is this team and ensure that we build the team that we believe is going to be uh, take the right steps now to get the team right for, for where we need it to be. Uh, as I say, I think the, that bringing young players through is an important aspect of that. I think continuity is a factor within that, developing the players, ensuring we have the right coaching, all those fa factors to ensure this team can get where we want to go. Jamie, <clears throat> is the weight of the shirt something that you've recognised? And what have you done to, to go about making it a little bit lighter? Yeah, I think... Um... I think probably when we reflect on that Scotland game, it was um, the most disappointing for me as, as a captain and from that team is is how we deviated from what we wanted to do. Um, and we've spoken quite openly about not being afraid of making errors, but obviously when you repeat those errors back to back, then that becomes a bit of an issue. And um, I think probably off the back of that, you know, we maybe went a little bit individual at times and, um, you know, probably tightened up a little bit, which is probably what Steve's alluding to. So... Um, the main focus for us this week has been, or the last couple of weeks in particular, has been around making sure that we feel like we can be ourselves, making sure that it is still okay to make mistakes, but we're going to learn very fast from those um, because we are a team that wants to push things. We want to see where we can take things. And um, like Steve said, the, the blueprint of how we wanted to play against Scotland in that first 20 minutes was outstanding. The way that we went out and acted on that game plan was great. Um, but the disappointing thing was that, you know, we gifted them a lot and... Um, that was largely down to sort of people straying away from the plan. So we've got to make sure we, we're very clear on what we want to do. We've got a lot of respect for Ireland, but at the same time, we've got a very clear plan on how we want to try and beat them. And, and just on Manny, as was mentioned, he, he was playing in National One less than a year ago. Can you just talk about him as a character and his personality, how mature he is as a player and, and his readiness for, for Saturday? He's ready. He's he's more than ready. He, you know, you've seen that in the in the time that he's had on the field so far in the Six Nations. He's an incredible talent. But like you said, the maturity that I've seen from Manny is is something that's impressed me a lot. His willingness to learn. He's eager. You're constantly having to pull him back. Um, but he's he's so excited for this opportunity. You can see that, and that energy is infectious throughout the team. And you know, when young guys come in and have an impact on a team like that, it's always very very impressive. Steve, we've um, uh, got George Furbank back in as well. Um, we've no space for Freddie Stewart again. With um, you know your thoughts on his performance against Scotland, obviously he was um, quite important in, in getting that opening score over the line, and um, what he's done right to retain his place in the team. Yeah, um, again, I consider one of the factors being continuity in selection. I think uh, George is a player who's played really well all season. And I think you saw aspects within that game where um, he, 
he, he was bringing all his talent onto that pitch and you see him the way he carried the ball back um, the way he, there, was, there was one moment there where he gave an offload and he went to ground and the the critical thing I went was it the right decision to give an offload I thought it absolutely was just we weren't reading off him and part of that is players spending time playing together understanding when a player is going to make an offload when a player is going to do something that comes from spending time together playing together um, and, and understanding each other that bit more and um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. so I'm just going to say this is England's well, your 20th match as England coach are you ahead or behind when you thought you'd be at this stage um, I think right now the the first period uh, of being in this role was around ensuring that to get the team right for the World Cup, to build a competitive team at the World Cup, and then understanding that at that point post World Cup, which was which was obviously when there was a plan of changing coaching teams with England, is then be responsible for building the next team and building the next phase, and that's where we are right now is building the next phase. So we played three games in that in that next phase of understanding where we are, and. You have plans, and I've talked about this before, um, is having plans in place of where you want to be and where you need to be, and then always being ready to adapt. And quite clearly through this championship, we, we've had to adapt with some of the unavailability of certain players through for, for various reasons. And then bringing young players through that have emerged that potentially not that long ago we weren't talking too much about, but we've seen the emergence of five new caps in this championship for, for England, um, which I think is a big positive step for us. Can I just ask this a million dollar question? How do you beat Ireland? Mm. Do you go in with the sort of game plan you did against the box in the semi-final of the World Cup? No, you would not be wanting me to, uh, expecting me to disclose the, the game plan sat here. Uh, firstly, let's be clear about Ireland. Uh, right now, I think we'd all agree the, the best team in the world. Might not have won the World Cup, but right now, uh, the way they're playing, the way they've been playing through the first period of this championship, we're the best team in the world. Um, and one of the aspects that their attack is probably the best in the world. Now, it's going against the defence that wants to put people under an awful lot of pressure. And so we're going to be really tested there. And I'm looking forward to seeing our defence in under this test. What we've been able to do is force um, teams to change the way they're playing a little bit. We've forced teams to make um, a number of errors. And, and then we've started having the ability to capitalise off the back of those turnovers that are created. Now, quite clearly, playing against Ireland, if, if they're allowed to get into their rhythm, then they're a very strong side. So we need to ensure they don't get in that rhythm. And, and from there is maximise, when we get those opportunities, maximise the, the, uh, how quickly we take them. Can I just ask both of you, I mean, would you consider it's a, it's a squad in transition because of the cycle or is that not a fair reflection on where you're at understand what you're trying to what you're trying to do but can, can you be seen as that or that? Um, I think I'll, if I answer that first I think I've said over the last period about the, the team evolving um, I said from a, having foundations in place that we need to keep strong we need to evolve and part of that's evolve tactically evolve technically evolve physically and, and, and so evolve evolve from the squad, um, the composition, the makeup of the players, and you, and you can see that's that's changing over this period. But let's be clear here: is whilst we're respectful of those factors, so you go into every game we want to win, and I, we keep it very simple: we, we want to go into this game and, and we're aiming to get the result we want. No, I, I can. I entirely agree. I think like it could be very easy for an excuse to be made that we're in in transition or whatever you might want to call it, like. In the here and now, we're we're here to win this. We're here to, you know, take on the best team in the world at Twickenham, and um, you know, there's going to be no excuses going into this game, and we're very excited about that. Thank you very much. Richard. Thank you.